a spin-off of the original wildly popular Life Below Zero. Life Below Zero Next Generation is a unique take on, its Big Brother program in that, it follows Alaskans, who tried a life of comfortable contemporary living, and have instead opted to test their luck, in the brutal and unforgiving Alaskan wilderness. Next Generation assembled an eclectic cast of individuals, who were seemingly fed up with the mundaneness of daily life, in a technologically driven society. Unlike their predecessors on the original Life Below Zero, however, much of the cast is entering this dangerous and largely unknown space, with little to no real-world training on how to survive in the conditions, the Alaskan wilderness brings about. So, who exactly are the members of the Life Below Zero Next Generation cast, and what are the unique takes they have on the program as a whole? Most of Life Below Zero's cast, has been living off-grid for decades, so for Next Generation's cast, they wanted to find people, who recently moved out there, or who have one foot in civilization and one foot, in wilderness. National Geographic Channel's hit franchise Life Below Zero, is returning this fall with new seasons of both the original show, and Life Below Zero Next Generation, and the schedule has been set for their returns. Suikens lives 500 miles from the nearest city, and 80 miles from the closest road, with 83 grizzly bears as her neighbors. She is the sole owner and operator of Kavik River Camp, a base of refuge on the north slope that, she calls home. Sue is tough as nails, having survived a near-deadly grizzly bear attack, but lived to tell the tale. Sue recognizes she lives in bear country, they are not in hers. In addition to her business in Kavik, she also recently purchased property of her own. A remote cabin in China, where she spends several months out of the year. Although it is closer to the road system, Sue faces the challenges of new terrain, and new threats in China. As she gets older, she learns the limitations of her aging body, as the obstacles seem to mount was born and raised in the Alaska, away from any form of civilization, for 18 years. He is a native Athabascan and was brought up with his 13 brothers and sisters, in a remote cabin his family built, 40 miles from the nearest village. After a rough transition, from the village to civilization, Rico eventually moved back to the wilderness, where he feels most at home and prides himself, as a family man with five kids of his own. He divides his time between, a home in Fairbanks and a connection to his past at his family's cabin in Huslia, where he must rely on his own knowledge, of the land to survive. The Hailstones. Chip and Agnes Hailstone, live on the Cobac River in the northwest of Alaska, where they have raised, their seven children. Agnes is native in Upiak and works daily, with her daughters and grandson to pass down, her native culture. Both Chip and Agnes, teach their daughters and grandchildren traditional and modern, ways of hunting and gathering on native lands, so that they will be able to provide for themselves and their future families. Part of living off the land is being ready, going with nature's flow, weather and available materials. Andy Basich and Denise Becker Andy Basich and Denise Becker, live on the Yukon River, where the only way in or out is by boat or snow machine. Andy moved to Alaska from Washington DC, to explore this area, which he knew little about. When Andy first arrived, this was raw land. He built his life from scratch, from a vision he had. To live and survive in the Alaska, Andy learned to make something out of the raw materials, provided to him in this environment. Andy hunts, harvests, grows and brews 80% of what he eats and drinks moose, black bear, caribou, salmon, mountains of vegetables, and beer, of course. Andy's nickname is Magever, his survival knowledge is largely self-taught, and he will turn his hand to anything, whether it is making his own bullets, and knives or building his own house. Jesse Holmes lives in Brush Kano, Alaska, along the waterways with his trusted team of sled dogs that he has bred, raised and trained on his own. He left his home of Alabama at age 16, making his way to Alaska, by jumping freight trains. In the years he's been in the bush, Jesse has acquired many skills, from Alaskan old-timers including carpentry, which has enabled him not only to sustain, a remote lifestyle, 
but also make a living building boats, sleds and cabins as a means of survival. Jesse strives to carry on Alaskan traditions, particularly as an avid dog musher, with his sights on winning the Iditarod. However, although he originally purchased land, in Brush Counter for the region's optimal dog training conditions, now that he is settling in, Jesse is beginning to think of himself as more of a survivalist, than simply a dog musher.